Hi guys, it's me, Penis Head. Thank you for for uh, switching on my channel. Yes, thank you. So, yeah, let's come to my uh, topic today. I got a new item and uh, to make a small tutorial and uh, perhaps a little review, whatever. And the item is called from Squarp Instruments. The Apex all in one sequencer, MIDI, ECB, or what you need, uh, two displays, OLED, and so much functionalities. We take a closer look, but not too close, because it has uh, one million possibilities. So, um, yeah, come with me, and we check it out. Have fun. Your penis head. Oh, stop, stop, one moment, please. I have more to say. Just a moment. Um, I just want to give you a preview of my next video. So uh, just look in my boxes here. I got what's that? So let me see. Uh, it's from Black Corporation Eurorack module. So two. I think it's it's a kind of uh, um, take a look. Yes, uh, oh, what is it? I think we have to open it. I think something like Deckard's voice, you know what this is? Uh, it's the first time I open it. I had to be careful because I think it's very expensive. So, oh yes. What's that? Uh, Deckard's voice, yes, it's correct. Deckard's voice, and then, so the other guy item should be then the expander. It's called Rachel. So let's take a closer look. Yes. Rachel, ha! <laughs> yeah. So these two guys, I want to make uh, a review in the next couple of weeks, month, or years, and then I have uh, the most I have here on on my feet, the most wanted Eurorack module in the world, the most wanted. Here it is. It's Blinky. Yeah. And the best is, uh, I, I want to sell it, but hmm, to which price? I think it's very expensive. Very, very expensive, right? Yeah. <laughs> so don't write me. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to Apex. Thanks. Bye. So here we are. Let's take a look, a closer look to the Apex. So we have here 128 um, pads without a click, no noise, and all around them are click pads. So you have fixed click and you hear that and you feel that. So these are all click pads and this is the, uh, yeah, the keyboard pads so you can just move your finger without a rubber feeling on the pads. The chassis is kind of plastic and the top here it's also plastic but I think that's because of the promotional item. Uh, I think it, it will be aluminium. Okay, and uh, here let's come to the connections. We see here um, two MIDI ins, one in mini check. We have four MIDI outs and one mini check MIDI. Then we have 
CV in, two inputs, CV out four, and four gate out, then a switch for um, a foot switch, the SD card slot, and two USB um, connections, one for device and one for, uh, for host. Yes, uh, that's it. The displays, take a look, closer look here. It's, it's very sharp. And the other display, it's exact the same. And uh, the knobs, look here. It's a little bit crappy. I think it's it's really crappy. You know, you, you take a look. It's it's crappy. Yeah. Now we take a look on the the drum mode, drum sequence mode. <coughs> on track one, we have the sequence, right? So I select track two, and this is also a sequence mode now. But uh, I want it as a drum machine. So here it is, and now I can play the RD8. Low volume up to higher. Okay. gone and we 
Here we go. Yeah. Mute functions. Now all is muted and drums back. And if you just have the drums here, you can mute the uh, instruments from your drums by holding the last one, I think. No. Uh, no. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sorry. You press this knob and then you mute. So, and if you want, want a snare and roll on the snare, here it is. conditions so all is possible yeah this was the drum mode So let us talk about the isomorphic keyboard. So I'm on track number three and I have this sound here from uh, Waldorf Streichfett and yes um, on the screen you can see which note I play and you can see the chords and I play chords and you see the name of the chord. And th this is not a fixed fixed graphic design. You can change this. So I'm in the scale major. And you can go to chromatic. But uh, <laughs> But it's not, not all, so you can define the chump. And with that you can go to the upper and lower notes. And here is nothing. This means the chump. You have seventy two scales built in.
Japanese blues. So, and you see. I want to show you the um, algorithm here in the Hapex to generate sequences on the fly or to modify them. Um, I have this sound now. So, and there's nothing in the track. I just press an algorithm generator. So, quantization 16, and I can define from which node to which node uh, there will be generated nodes. So um, let's make just this and yeah let's see what happened. We can take a look here. Okay so we have now <laughs> Just a random one. Density, just make less. I delete this track and generate another one. That's a wrong, wrong knob. So. Okay, quantization. See what happened. Now I have curves and sym symmetry features, so I just click on that and duplicate on and now on the pitch. You see here what happened. It's not very nice, but these are the possibilities. Or we just delete this again. Okay, and we can play something. Uh, or we make just a generator 16. And let's make C to C. This. Okay, no, I have to click here. So that sounds better. And if you've done this like that, you just go back to your steps and you can change the notes how you want it. So, or just delete all. 
I just want to talk about some common things on the Apex and um, a special feature here in this item. Uh, it's uh, the effect unit. Uh, these are not audio effects, so because it's just a MIDI CV machine. So um, we have 16 tracks, and I have now my drum track here, track number two, and I press on effects, and then this uh, switches off, and then I have here seven slots free uh, to fill with effects and on the first there's the matrix and with the matrix I come later to that let's def let's look what effects we can put in just in track number two so this all is for every of the 16 tracks included and that's amazing and a lot so let's click on so here we see all the effects arpeggiator chance Euclid filter harmonizer LFO randomizer scalar swing and envelope all with nice graphics so uh, let's take um, Euclid so and then we can define the source and perhaps CV in or pro project LFO you have here all uh, MIDI CC events pitch band and aftertouch so um, you can say I have here a CV in from the input and I decide which CV in I have two here so and I can say this should go to destination Euclid to this what I have here and what should uh, this do so the pulses perhaps so and now your external gear is controlling the Euclid or whatever you want um, you can have more effects like an LFO like this one so and We'll see what does this look like. So in the matrix, yes. So um, just a moment. Toggle on, and we make it faster. Now let's look in the matrix, the project LFO, LFO A goes to steps and now you see the LFO which is constantly turning and the rate so now it's much more lower I hope so no <laughs> okay <laughs> let's come to another point yeah um, so you can put all the stuff here inside and have all parameters here and if there's a second menu you just click on the second um, button here. Let's go to the effects. So and that's very interesting. Just this alone is a very good feature uh, to control all incoming and outcoming stuff. So when I have here MIDI coming, MIDI events, MIDI events from somewhere I can define to which effect they should go Yes, randomizer is also very interesting. On off, so random. All filled with nice graphics. Octave. Great. Yes. And that's not all. We can just go to assign. There's a built-in 
control unit and so here you have your 8 controller and you can control all what you have inside perhaps we have the Euclid or the LFO just define which waveform, the rate and now you have it here or you can say hey I want to control my pitch band here you have it or your randomizer you want the octave up let's do it and you have your CC let's take a filter outside in any thin check now you have it perfect it's great and it's all there and uh, let's come to to uh, the project it's absolutely easy to save load and uh, and make new projects you have here just present project A longer than save and load I make save saving video that's in the name of my my stuff here so you can ch uh, change project A project B that's all okay let's see the Euclidean pattern generator in action this is my normal beat and now I switch on the Euclid on so let's look here just one pulse instrument, kick, snare, I just want to show you the settings menu. Uh, here it is. So we have sync in, sync out. This is sync input. You can all define that. Sync out is still the same. Much, much more. USB, gate outs, MIDI, 4. It's all in. Miscellinus. So metronome screen contrast, LED brightness and here's the info about the OS I still have in this uh, item so yeah 1.10 and back and then you can here define the, the CV gate pedal and MIDI in, MIDI through, and how to save the settings. Yes. So we learned about the step mode, the live mode, and uh, and nothing else. <laughs> but we still have the pattern mode, which I make uh, in some minutes, and and the automation mode. So now yeah, let's. Uh, play our sequence here. So, 
and now I can add an automation. We take the uh, to easy easy to demonstrate. We take the pitch band. So. No, that was wrong. We start here. We go to. So interpolation is on. Now we make off. So. There you see how that works. Still the same. Pattern length is important. You can move higher and lower. Inside here, so you have OCC and RPN, and you have CV in, CV out. So that's all inside. And yes, let's go to the pattern. So um, just remember when we have uh, just a moment, I have uh, I let it play. Oh, I have the automation, so we have to switch off. So, so we have the patterns here. I just have three patterns, and you have eight patterns. You have eight patterns for each track to decide to play. So uh, if you are uh, in a live setup and you have your project A here and you know which pattern you want to play, so you just switch. So um, I have nothing in, in pattern 2 and 2-8, two so it's, it mutes still. So drums off. And that's the way it goes back. That's all. But just to demonstrate it. Now I had the Apex a couple of weeks and I can tell my experiences with it. I just wanted to give you a small overview about the standalone sequencer. I hope you got helpful information and you keep researching for yourself. Study the manual before you buy so you can see which details are important for you. For sure, this is a unique sequencer in these times. There's not really an alternative because of the tons of futures. You can work complete in a classical way or you use all the modern tools and effects which are built inside. This open a world of fantastic music. Let's hold on. Squarp instruments have done a really good job and they have the experience to do it. But they focus too much on the internal software and structure and have neglected the quality of the case, knobs and connectors. And that's the only negative aspect I want to get rid of. This case with these ports and buttons will suffer if used in harsh conditions. The connectors are not screwed and that will cause a lot of problems. I also suspect that the controllers will have parameter germs in a short time. They are also not screwed. There are enough examples from 30 years ago of how such sequencer bolides must be built. These still work today. For example, the Yamaha sequencers. This is hardware for frequent users, not for hobby users. So my little tip is to build a pro version from the Hapax that will last for years on the stages and in the studios. I don't want to complain too much because you get so much for your money that you don't need any other sequencer. This is an excellent control center for all your devices. You will never be able to use all of the options built into the Apex. Squab folks, don't blame me, but I'm testing independently and this has been my experience. For the Apex, I will give 9 out of 10 points just because of the build quality. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned 
for more content. If you want to see something special from me, just write it in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. Your Spinny Set. Bye.